uphill task for me to speak here after uh, the love Mr. Ravensh Arvind, the great actor, has got, and Kalyani Khona, who's spreading the message of love to the world. Uh, but I'm going to try by sharing my own life story. I was born on uh, 1st September 1987. It was uh, Ganesh Chaturthi, and I'd, I was born through a cesarean operation. The unique thing with a cesarean operation for a mother is that she can choose the date for her child's birth. And Ganesh Chaturthi is considered, Ganesh, uh, Lord Ganesh has considered the remover of obstacles. So she was happy one year into a marriage, she was going to have a first child. But I really don't think I was really a remover of obstacles. In fact, I, I guess I was an obstacle. But uh, anyway, when, when I was born, medical literature said, I'm going to live the life equivalent of a wooden doll. Because I was born with arthrogryphosis, which, which basically means a rare congenital disorder where I don't have muscles in my arms and legs. There were fractures in my arms and legs when I was born. My, my entire body was bleeding because of that. And when my parents were called into the medical chambers of the doctors, they were told that he's going to live the life equivalent of a wooden doll. However, I was lucky to have been born to parents who decided not to really go by medical literature and decided to give me a perfectly normal life. Early in my life, when my mom took me to a disability examiner to give a disability certificate, the examiner decided to give a certificate that read 100% disabled. She had that corrected to read above 80% disabled because she felt that nobody can really be 100% disabled. And I think that really set the tone for my life. The first few years in my life were filled with operations, injections, and various corrective surgeries. And thus, I missed out on most of nursery and kindergarten. My mom used to homeschool me, and I guess by the time I entered class one, I was more well-read than normal class one students were. However, to get into class one was an uphill task in itself, because my parents had decided that they want to send me to a normal school, and I think that's the best decision they took or maybe the second best after the decision of marrying each other. Uh, however, most normal schools, unfortunately, did not know really how to react to a, wheelchair, to a wheelchair user being taken in. And they felt that he should be going to a special school. I was in Bombay then, and my mom visited at least 20 schools that sent her back saying that we cannot accommodate Nippon. However, luckily for her, there was a school called St. Mary's in Bombay at that time, who decided to see what I can do and not what I cannot do and decided to enroll me in school. I studied in, APJ, in St. Mary's till class fourth, and uh, then, then we shifted to Noida because my father's an entrepreneur and he started his own company in 1997, where I enrolled in APJ school, Noida. In, in my early years of uh, my normal school, even though I had gotten into a normal school, there were a lot of teachers who told my mother, let's make Nippon stay back a year in the class because his handwriting is not very readable. And she used to always tell them that if you're going to promote him based on his handwriting, He'll be in class one throughout his life because his handwriting can never improve. I mean, I've carried notes on what I'm going to speak here today, and I cannot read those notes myself. So that's how bad my handwriting is. Uh, but uh, so I did go to a normal school till class 10th. And uh, even though I was going to a normal school, students in the school itself did not really know how to react to a person with a disability. And uh, thus, I was socially excluded from most social engagements. And I decided to spend that time studying and because I felt that that's something in which I can do better than most of my classmates. In class 10th, I was proud when I scored 87% and I topped my class. I was, uh, I was covered in all newspapers and uh, that's when I promised my parents that in class 12th, I'm going to be on the front pages of newspapers. And in class 12th, I managed bettering that by scoring 98 in business studies, being the country topper. And I was on the front pages of newspapers. Uh, however, life w still wasn't very easy because uh, when I started applying to colleges across Delhi University, I realized, I realized that most colleges aren't really accessible to wheelchair users and uh, I didn't really know, know what to do and I think I took a shortcut in life and perhaps that's the, one, that's the first and last time I did take a shortcut by enrolling into a private college. Uh, and, even, and I did well in that private college, I was stopping every year, I actually studied in that private college for two years. But I felt I don't really want to study for a scra uh, scrap of paper. And within two years, I quit that private college. And I think everybody in the world thought that I'm mad. Two thirds into my graduation, I decided to restart my graduation. In 2007, I reapplied to Delhi University. And I still remember the first day of my, uh, the, the, the day of the interview at St. Stephen's College. At the interview, I was actually asked whether I would be ready to go up on floor every day. 
I had wasted two years and I wanted to go to the best college in the country. And I said yes. For four days, I did go up one floor every day to the economics classroom, which had been up for 125 years. But in four days, seeing my persistence in Stephen's shifted the economics classroom down. And that was a big moment for me. Uh, St. Stephen's was a great phase in my life. I made a lot of uh, friends, and luckily I've made friends everywhere I've gone after that. At uh, St. Stephen's, I also founded the Entrepreneurship Cell because I'd seen how my father had transitioned from an entrepreneur in 1997 where the four of us, me, my brother, my, and my parents used to sleep in one room to today where he's employing 300 people. And I wanted to spread that message in St. Stephen's. And the Entrepreneurship Cell in Stephen's is in fact today the first undergrad society that organizes a startup fair. So it's gone on even after I passed out of Stephens. In 2010, I passed out of Stephens, and I, don't, I didn't not only pass out of the first division degree, but I also got the first Anil Wilson Scholarship for Future Leadership Potential. And the next step I wanted to take was I wanted to study economics, and, uh, and I sat for a master's degree. Uh, the, the en and the, the entrance was the, for Delhi School of Economics was a competitive exam. And uh, even though all of my students, classmates were studying feverishly, they used to always think that iska to physically challenge quota mein ho jayega and assume that he doesn't really need to study. I felt that I really want to prove them wrong and I slogged through for the entrance for three months and when the result was out, I scored 52nd rank nationally and I defeated all my Stephen's classmates who applied for that entrance. However, life was still not very rosy. One year into, into Delhi School of Economics, all my classmates were sitting for placements, so I decided to sit for placements too. And uh, I was shocked by the lack of sensitivity of the corporate sector. Maybe I did not apply to SAP or EMC, that's why I faced that. But uh, the, what, uh, the, there, was, there, was, there was one company that actually rejected me because of lack of a disabled toilet, despite seven rounds of interviews. There was another that actually asked me if I've ever read a book, despite the fact that I was a master's student. And this happened in eight or 10 companies before I realized that if I really want to create the change, it's better to come from a position of power than go, from, go with a begging bowl. I decided to join my family business where I'm looking after finance and strategy today. But I also set up the Nippan Foundation in 2012. Uh, the Nippan Foundation works in the areas of health, dignity, and happiness for persons with disability. Uh, we've advised the Delhi government, we've advised the national government. We are on the railway advisory board on how to make railways accessible. Uh, another thing that the Nippon Foundation does is that uh, it provides wheelchairs at various expos, whether it's CII or PM or a very, any other industry or trade expo, you'll find a Nippon Foundation stall that is providing wheelchairs for the disabled and elderly. This year we're going to provide wheelchairs for the, at the Jaipur Literary Fest too. However, uh, my pet project at the Nippon Foundation, where I feel I can create the biggest change, is uh, the Nippon Foundation Equal Opportunity Awards that I started last year. And uh, we've managed getting in ENY as an audit partner. We have a completely independent jury. And if you're in Delhi, please come for a 70 on 2nd December. Uh, so through the Nippon Foundation, I'm trying to create change. However, I do feel that uh, attitudes amongst people, even today, at times, can be very insensitive. Uh, last year, I was uh, traveling in an, airline, in an airline where an on-ground hostess actually asked me, why are you on a wheelchair? I, it was an awkward question, and I had to tell her because I'm disabled. She made the situation even more embarrassing by saying, can you fly? I had to tell her, no, but I assume your plane can, because I'm sure none of you can fly too. Uh, in March this year, I, fe I felt some, uh, I, I was in a situation that was even more humiliating when a South Delhi restaurant denied me entry because of a lack of a disabled friendly toilet. Uh, lack, la sorry, a Delhi restaurant denied me entry saying that uh, people with disabilities are not allowed inside. I was, uh, I was to join eight friends who were already in the, in the restaurant. And I was completely shocked, and I sent out one tweet. And within no time, that tweet started trending. I was on national newspaper, uh, newspapers, television, etc. the other day, uh, the next day. And the Delhi government was also set up, forced to set up an inquiry into this. With, within a week, the Delhi government changed policies on how De Delhi restaurants are to treat people with disabilities. And uh, later in the year, I went to America in July where I found that there's this app called Yelp that actually has wheelchair accessible filters. I came back to India and convinced the matter to add wheelchair accessible filters too. So if you're identifying a restaurant in India, you can, through the matter, actually check wheelchair accessible filters. And what I feel will happen is that when companies have to answer whether they're wheelchair accessible, they definitely change the attitudes on the way they treat wheelchair users too. So the battle continues, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.
Nipun, thank you once again. You are indeed changing things for good and for India. Thank you so much.